Hello and welcome to Murder Analyzed. I'm Christina Moore. Thank you for joining me again today. Now, I hope you're all having a great day, um, as I am. So far, so good. So, before we start, just make sure you put the like, a thumbs up and all this sort of stuff and subscribe to the channel because I always forget to say it. So, thank you. If you have subscribed, it'd be really great if you could tell others to subscribe as well. I appreciate it very, very much. Now, today's case is another domestic abuse case of murder right the, the the girl was murdered in um the 3rd of october 2010 this 21 year old girl was li literally kicked and punched to death in front of her two-year-old child so this is the case of this extremely upsetting case actually of casey brittle So this case comes from Nottingham in the UK and it is a 2010, as I said, it's the 3rd of October 2010 and this poor girl Casey, her life was taken tragically by this awful, awful man and his name was Sanchez Williams. Now he was 26, I think, at the age of when he done this crime. Casey had had many, many years of abuse from this man. This girl was a stunning girl, right? You know, she she met this man, they started a relationship. I don't think the really I think he was very controlling from the beginning. The violence wasn't probably right there from day one, but the controlling behaviour was. The relationship sort of took a good turn I suppose and she was happy and she became pregnant by him and she had a little girl with him so now we've got a man that's not just now coercive controlling this girl but he starts to become extremely extremely violent and throughout this time she had tried to leave him on various occasions but it did, he wasn't taking no for an answer this man he just wouldn't it's so bad really because this case highlights again the case of the failings of the police and people that could have helped this girl to survive him, right? Or maybe, right? But someone here should have given it a chance, surely. Listen, this case is shocking in the way that this man, the father of this child, who murdered the mother of this child, done it in front of her. I mean, the damage to this child would be extreme, wouldn't it, really, when you think about it, that she's had to grow up knowing that she was a witness, I suppose, to her mother's murder. But not only that, the worst thing is with this man, after he'd done that to her, he left that child with that mother for about two hours. That child sat by its mother, trying to help her as she lay there dying and then dead hours he left her his own child you see this man's mentality one of being a, an abusive partner but he also had no care for his child it makes him extremely extremely ruthless in what he's done to not think of anybody apart from himself so as i said 2010 in october 2010 previous many many years previous of abuse and phone calls to the police and nothing being done absolutely nothing being done at all it's it's really bad this so the incident leading up to this final attack on poor casey was in june 2010 so in june casey was working in a shop clothes shop i think and she wasn't with him at that point. He's come into the shop. So now we're in a public place. So now we know this man is intent on hurting her because he's not only doing it behind closed doors, he's actually do it, doing it in a public place. So what he's done here is with this, this one, he had literally violently picked her up and threw her into a changing room. 
also attacking her in this changing room. Of course, the staff and people were shocked at this going on. They'd rung the police and everything. Now, Casey clearly had marks on her. She had marks, red marks around her throat. She had different stuff on her. But the police said they couldn't take any further action because there was no surveillance like CCTV or anything to prove what had happened. So he got off with that one. So now he is escalating because when you have a predator like him or an abuser like him that doesn't just abuse in a private place but doesn't mind abusing you in a public area he is now becoming more dangerous so the police should have picked this up straight away about his behavior right in a public place this violent disorder in a public place where you're attacking a woman that is tight this girl was tiny right and you can see this man the pictures are of this man it's quite a big man for him to pick you up and throw you and start to try and strangle you and the police say sorry there's no proof <laughs> and there's no CCTV to do it. It's your word against him, really. I don't suppose anyone else wants to come by and give any information when you have a man like this that's so willing to be violent in public. I think people would have been quite worried about this man. And I think at this point, Casey would have been extremely worried about this man. Now in August, so that's in June, so in August 2010, she sort of, I think she's not back with him, but she's on and off with him to try and keep it happy, right? Because don't forget, he's abusing her when she is with him and he's abusing her when she isn't with him, right? So this day in August 2010, they've gone out shopping. Again, public place. You're in a shopping centre, you're out and about in public. He headbutts her. He literally headbutts her like, like, like it's nothing. For me, it's so shocking that this man um, has been getting away with it. And that's just a few little things that I'm highlighting here. You can imagine what he was doing behind closed doors if he's doing this out in public. So I think at that point, his head butted her. He's thrown her into like a photo booth. You know, like in the shopping centres, you have photo booths. And, you know, it's like a little place where you go and you have your four photos taken and stuff. I mean, this man, at any point... I don't think she knew when it was coming or why it was coming or what happened. But he literally headbutted her, threw her in there, attacked her in there again. Of course, the police were called again, right? Because people are hearing this now. And again, no charges against him were laid that day because what they're saying is the police officer that attended was sort of naive, knew of the job, didn't know really what he was doing. I mean, <laughs> um, I... Uh, I, I just think it's really, really bad, right? It's really, really bad that we, you've, you have, you're in a public place. You're being attacked. The police come, or a police officer comes, but their excuse why it didn't go any further was not because he didn't do that to you, but because the officer was so inexperienced and probably, I would say, probably scared of this man, um, that really nothing else then was done either. Before October 2010, so don't forget this is August, after that incident where he headbutted her and pushed her into this photo booth and attacked her and the police let him off again because of their inexperience or an inexperienced officer, um, there was nine other incidents like that and they were escalating, right? They were escalating. So let's now get to the 10th or the 3rd of October, sorry, 2010, where this last attack on Casey took place. So neighbours could hear what was going on with this girl and this man. They could also hear as he was kicking, punching, stomping on her head, the young two-year-old saying, I want my mummy. They knew now that the young girl had walked in and could see the attack happening to her mother and was screaming. The neighbours could hear it. It was two hours, two hours after the end of that attack that the police finally turned up and things were reported. This child was in a room with the mother who was unconscious for two hours, absolutely beaten, beaten to death in front of her, screaming for her mother. 
I mean, this man, the mentality of this man is shocking, isn't it, really? So Casey's murder, how she died under autopsy. She had been beaten to death. She had um, head injuries, severe head injuries. Her jaws, a jaw on both sides was broken. She had another 27 injuries to her body. 27 injuries. I mean, it's shocking, isn't it, really, when you think about it. When we talk about domestic abuse cases, and this is why I do so many of them, because it's about giving you the awareness, right, to understand whether you're with them or leave them. And in this case, whether you're in private or public, things can happen. And it's so difficult. And so that's why I don't, and I've had lots of different messages about it, about why people stay, why they don't stay. I always say it's up to you because no one can give you that advice, right? Because every domestic case is different. These abusers are all different. They come in all shapes and sizes. They have a mentality that we don't understand if we're not within that relationship. Most of the time it's the women or men in these relationships that really understand sometimes what's best for them, whether to leave or to go. But some, but whatever you do, you must get help because it's this sort of thing. And gosh, when you look at 11 different incidents, right, of where this man could have been arrested, you know, would it have stopped him? Probably not, right? Probably not. I don't think it would have. Um, but it may have given her a chance to get away and do stuff. And um, I, I think this man was always going to be an abuser. I don't think it was just Casey that he, he it was in him to be this. And whatever girl he had been with, um, he would have abused. Right? He would have abused because some people are just like that. So this is why I say always use Claire's Law. Always use the agencies that can help you, whether it's just for to have a chat about your circumstances and what you can and can't do, what's best for you in your circumstance. Because when we look at these cases, because they're all different, they're all different. But I think when you have a man like this, Sanchez Williams, who is so violent, behind closed doors and in public, he is a real danger, a real danger. And to leave that girl unconscious there for two hours, and she later died in hospital with her two-year-old child, his child there, the damage that he's done to that child, it's just unbelievable, this case, really. So in this case, there had been six officers, I think, that were disciplined, and four that were um, reprimanded within this. But, you know, it comes down, if you are a police officer and you're working in public, or you're working on domestic abuse cases, you have to understand that you have to act quite quickly. I think this is back in 2010, right? So we're now in 2024, lots have changed. And I'm not joking, the police are inundated daily with calls about domestic abuse. They are, they're, it's in, they're inundated. And a lot of times the victims don't wanna press charges or try and lie for their partners. And, there's, and I've said this before, there's many reasons why people do this. One, because they think if you're gonna arrest him, he's gonna be taken away for a few hours, maybe a couple of days in the cells, whatever, and then you let out. Then what? Right? Then what? So there are reasons why people do not um, report it, or when it is reported by neighbours or anything else, lie to try and stop it going any further. Because listen, these people, unless they're going to murder you, really, and the police are going to assist you and help you, and your, you know, your charities and your family are going to move you away and do all this stuff, you're still in danger. Right? So I can understand it from the victim's point of view of why they don't want to continue on to, you know, with the prosecutions or whatever. But the police now have a right and a duty if they think there has been violence, even whether you're saying there hasn't, and they clearly see there is, that they can arrest that person. And it sort of takes the blame them off you. But neighbours will report things. People will, schools will now, if your kids come in and say something. 
within um, the school. They have a duty as well to protect. So there's a lots of things within domestic violence that need to come out. But I think Casey's mum has said that the only person really responsible for her death was Sanchez Williams. He was. This man was so violent, such a nasty piece of work, really. It was just, it's just terrible what he did. And I have to agree with her. It, it, you know, the police can only do so much, right? Yes, there was clear foulings in this case. But it comes down to education. It comes down to educating the women or the victims, women or men, or, and as educating in schools, what is acceptable in our communities? What is acceptable? Why are these people so determined to hurt others in such a way, especially when they're hurting the people they're supposed to love. They're supposed to love and care for these people so much, but they would do this to them and to their child. So don't forget this um, Sanchez Williams didn't have any criminal record really in relation to them offenses or attacks on her until the day that he murdered her. And when you read deeply into this case of Casey. She was exactly what I was just trying to say about a person that was so scared of him, right? That she would play down the attacks. So even if the police had asked, she would play it down because she didn't want him arrested. Not because she didn't want him arrested to get him off the streets and stop attacking her, but because of fear, because of fear. But this girl's life ended in such a tragic way, right? So there's got to be a way, hasn't there? And this is what I'm saying about education. This is what I'm saying, always talk to someone when you're in this, you know, whether it's a charity or you can just email someone over, you know, you've got websites, everything now, I'll put them all up for you. To talk about what is the best situation for you. With <laughs> Sanchez Williams, he's got life in prison, right? Minimum of... 15 years at first when he went to, to court. That's what he got. And um, is it enough that you took a life? Then at appeal, right, his sentence went up to 20 years minimum. So he can't go up for parole until 20 years. So we have some judges out there, right, that really, when you get to the appeals court, have just about had enough of seeing these cases coming through where, you know, 15 years, the judge, you know, would have give a good sentence, I suppose, of 15 years minimum, but he could have give 20, right? He could have. So just give the 20. If you sometimes give too much uh, for a judge where it's not on the sort of standard, right? At appeal, it can be dropped a little bit, but this judge in the appeal court actually gave him five years more. Unless I, you know... He's um, in there for a long time. So he's got to do minimum 20 years now before he comes out. So he went in in 2010. Because that's when he committed it. So his sentence would have, even though he would have been held on remand, or whatever, his sentence would have started. So, you know, 2030 is not long. It's not long now before this man, who was 26 when he went in, right? He's only going to be 46 when he comes out. There's plenty of potential for this man, after he comes out of prison, to offend again. There is. Prison sometimes, for these sort of people, is not a deterrent. It really isn't. This man is a very violent man. So my warning to you is, in 2030, watch out for this man and keep well away. Well away. Really. Because you'll end up the same as Casey. It's really shocking, isn't it? You've got to think now, her child now, because this was, what, 14 years ago, will now be 16, a young woman herself now. But she's had to live for all these years with this memories of her mother laying there dying at the hands of her father. I mean, what he done to that child is terrible. But what he done to that girl is really, really bad. Now, the BBC, I think, made a documentary about it, or like a drama sort of thing about it. And uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's meant to be very good. And I think it's um, 
sort of shows you the life of this with highlights about I'll put it in the link if I can find it what it's about and you can have a look at it if you can find it you can have a look at it but it's about her case and other cases I think like this that highlight how much damage domestic violence can be not just on the person that's lost their lives but on their families on their children and this it's a really shocking thing you know to lose a child in such violence the, the mother this mother I, I feel for this mother and then you have the child itself who has had to watch it and experience and live with this for the first early years of her life and I always say about children in early life them early years are the most important I really wish this family well and I hope for you if you have any issues with domestic abuse male or female that you contact someone and try and get some help so until the next time bye bye